Hi guys, Travis here with Upgraded RC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust your cam and tow in alignment on the eRevo 2.0. So to get our cam and tow in alignment correct, we're going to need to make sure that two other things on the car are adjusted correctly first. Number one being the pivot ball adjustment here between the axle carrier and the control arm. If this pivot ball is not adjusted correctly, as we adjust our cam alignment, it's going to not be correct either. It's going to be off. So that's pretty important. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Number two, the other thing that's pretty important is this steering link right here that connects the servos to the steering rod and link ends. This needs to be as perfectly parallel as you can get it to something else square or parallel on the frame. In a sense, we want to make sure that we're going as straight as we possibly can with our tires. Um, to make small adjustments, if you have a remote with trim, you can use the trim on your remote to adjust your steering link here. If not, you'll have to use these turnbuckles if you don't have that or if you need to adjust more than the trim will take up. Now, I recommend you get this as straight as possible. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. You're just going to have to find a nice, long, flat parking lot where you can make sure your car is going as straight as possible and then come back and do your towing again. So let me show you how to adjust your pivot ball inside of the axle carrier housing. Here, we'll bring this over here. Let me zoom in on this for you. So here's your axle carrier and your wheel hub. Now I've got another axle carrier here housing without the parts in it because I thought it would be easier to explain to you guys how the pivot ball works. Well, basically you've got your front bearing and your rear bearing and the axle goes through the center as you can see here and comes out to your wheel. These other two holes here, these are for your pivot balls. I apologize to you, I don't have a pivot ball here to show you, but we're going to go ahead and use this screw for mock-up. Basically what happens is you drop your pivot ball into these holes, and they come out the other side, and this is what attaches to your control arm. Now, what this does is this gives your control arm a full range of movement back and forth on this pivot ball. If your pivot ball is too tight, you won't get the full range of movement. It'll, it'll be like this. If it's too loose, you get your full range of movement, but you have play in it. What we're trying to eliminate is that play and still have the full range of movement. Now to do that, you adjust it with your pivot ball cap. And you guys can see that there. This is your cap, kind of funny looking. And if you've never used this tool before, that's what that end right there is for. That pivot ball cap goes right on the end of that tool and then you can put it in the adjustment and adjust it. So then that goes through here like this and you would just go ahead and, and turn it in until you felt that you had the right adjustment on your pivot ball. Remember we want a full range of movement here but we don't want any play back and forth that way. The other thing here is this pivot ball cap actually serves two functions. Number one, remember how I showed you the top part here is where we put our tool and we adjust the pivot adjustment, the pivot ball adjustment. Well, in the center here, there's a hole. Now, that hole is what we're going to stick our Allen through to do our cam alignment. Now, the best time to do a pivot ball adjustment is when you've got your control arms and your axle carrier and everything off the vehicle. That way, you can really tell how much movement you've got between your control arm and your axle carrier here and what the play is on it. But there is another way to do it. Lots of times people like to make sure their pivot balls are, are running good out in the field. And a good field adjustment here is to take off your push rods from your suspension. The reason we're doing that is because we want to eliminate the shock out of what we're feeling here. So this way we can tell we've got a free range of movement up and down this way. There's no restrictions whatsoever. And I can also feel the amount of play here. As I pull in and out on this, I can tell how much play I've got, which is zero. That is correct. Now if you did have to adjust this, first I would do like I did here. I would go ahead and take the suspension push rod off so that you have the full range of movement. And then you take your, your funny looking tool again. And you can stick this right here. Now this, this blue cap that's right here, you see I got one right here. This blue cap, all this is, is this goes inside of your pivot ball, your pivot ball cap to keep the dust and stuff out. Now you can remove that if you want to if you're having a hard time but it does have a little slit in the center for the cam adjustment and your wrench will also go over the outside of this blue rubber piece so that you can do your adjustment without taking that out. I think that's why uh, Traxxas did that was to make sure that you didn't need to take that out and get dust in anything. 
So you go ahead and turn that to the right or the left until you get the correct amount of adjustment here and make sure, very important, you have a full range of movement here. That's it on the pivot ball adjustment. So once you have all of your eight pivot balls adjusted correctly, the next thing we're going to want to do is adjust our, our steering. And the first thing we need to do to do that is go ahead and turn your remote and then plug in your batteries and fire up your car. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to move our steering servos back and forth a couple times and make sure that they're at center rest. Okay? Now you can leave that on for now. But you go ahead and adjust the steering link here to make sure that that's perfectly parallel and your tires are as straight as you can possibly get them. Like I said, you can use the trim on your remote to do that. You can also use these turnbuckles here if the adjustment's too great or your remote doesn't have the trim. But once you get this all adjusted, you can go ahead and turn your car back off and try to be as careful as you can so you don't move your steering at all for the next step. Okay, so once you get all of your eight pivot balls adjusted correctly and you're steering as straight as you can possibly get it, our next step is going to be a little bit of construction. We're going to have to make four of these six by six squares with three holes in the center of them. Now once you get your six by six square done, you're going to take a straight edge and draw from corner to corner and corner to corner to create an X in the center. Now that X in the center is exactly where your axle hub goes. Um, you're going to drill this hole the same size as your axle hub here. That way it sits on here nice and tight, like so. The other two holes on here are for us to stick our Allen through to do the cam alignment. Once you've made your four six inch by six inch squares and you've put a hole at perfect center, the same size as your axle hub, the next step is to find out where we're going to put our other two holes for the cam alignment tool. Now I've set my car down on top of my welding table here. It's a, a pretty flat piece of metal that I have a lot of trust in and I believe it's going to do fine for us. Once you do that, let me go ahead and zoom in here on our axle carrier. What we're going to do is we're going to come out with an angle finder. And we're going to put our angle finder here in the center of our hub and then we're going to adjust it to where we have a straight line between both the pivot ball balls and the center of the hub. Now you can see that we have a direct alignment there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take and put that on our piece of wood. Like so, if we put that there and slide that over to that, you'll see that that matches up. What we do is we draw a line right here, and then we can drill our two holes on this line at the correct measurement. So then you can measure from the center of your hub to the center of the pivot ball on each end, and that's where your holes go. Now just so you guys know, each template you make will be relative to that tire or that wheel. So make sure you label the template as each angle on each tire is going to be different. So make sure you do this all the way around on all four corners and you have four templates with four different angles. Now I told you guys that I made my templates out of quarter inch laminate flooring and they've worked pretty good for a while but in lieu of this video I went ahead and made some new templates and I made these ones out of acrylic. So this way you guys can see what I'm doing and to be honest with you, I found out that it's a lot more rigid than the wood is, which is going to give me a better, more true adjustment and make me happier. So once you've got your construction done and your pieces made, you can go ahead and mount these up on your hubs here. And I'm using a washer before I put my nut on, make it just a little bit tighter if possible and to help distribute the, the load. So we'll put those on there and make them nice and tight remember when you're doing the front be as careful as you can you don't turn the steering okay if you turn the steering I would recommend that you take all these back off and put your batteries back in and reset your steering so that it's at center rest again. 
Do not turn your car on with these on here. Very, very bad. If you happen to hit the throttle and this thing takes off, these are really sharp. It's going to be like four razor blades going through the air. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be good for your car to probably take you out in the process. So just be really careful when you're putting the front on that you don't turn it too much. It should stay at center rest. That's it. Once you get those on there, we're going to go ahead and set this on our table here. Now that you've got your templates on your car and your axle nuts tight, you're going to want to go ahead and set it on a table that's fairly flat. Like I said, I'm using my welding table here. It's made out of metal. And as you can see here on my digital level, it's very flat. If you have a table that's not flat, make it as flat as you possibly can by shimming up the corners. Now we can go ahead and push our car up and down on this flat surface and find the right height where it likes to sit naturally, probably about right there. Make sure these are tight. These are tight, they're where they want to be. Now we can use different tools here to find our adjustment for the cam. So we're going to go ahead and do our cam alignment first. And to do that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to stick our 2.5 millimeter Allen through the hole that we made and into a, our pivot ball adjustment here so that we can adjust our cam. I would recommend taking the top one all the way in to where it's tight and stops and do that all the way around on all of them. On the bottom one, you can take it in until it stops, but it's not necessary to be tight because we're going to be backing that one out for the adjustment. Now there's a positive camber and a negative camber, and I'll let you read up on that and do all the research you want, but everybody recommends that for the RC cars we have only negative camber. So if we're going to have only negative camber, this is going to be turning this way so the top's coming towards us. So that's why I said that if the top's tight all the way around and we just adjust the bottom one here, That'll be the easiest way to make sure that our camber adjustment stays tight on the top and we just have to keep adjusting the bottom. Now there are many different angle finders out there. We've got angle finders here all the way from your, your simple angle finder like this to your digital angle finder here to the JP Concepts track angle finder. Now I really like this one right here. This one's great because you can take and you can set your adjustment at the degree that you want and lock it down and then you could run around and put it up against your tire everywhere and make sure that the measurements are all the same if you had the same measurement on all the tires. I'm doing it a little bit different on mine so that the front is a little bit more camber than the back. So if I use our digital one here, which is the one I like to use for that, and we took this here and set it next to it, we can put this up against it and then we can put the arm up against our template and that will so to speak give us a true reading of what we got here which ours says 92.3 degrees now that's pretty good that means that I have a negative 2.3 degrees camber angle that's that's not bad at all the book recommends between one and two and a half so we're like right there that's pretty good that's where I want to be on that one and once again you see the uh, JP Concepts one that I have here. I've set it for the same degree mark on here, and I can put it up against here and check, and that is perfect as well. If it is not correct, what we're going to do is we would put our Allen in the bottom here. Remember, the top's tight, so we'd put the Allen in the bottom, and we would adjust out so that as the screw comes out, our template goes in. That's going to change our angle. Once we get to the angle that we want and this matches up, we're good to go. We're done. So go ahead and do that on all four of your tires. Screw the top Allen in to where it's not, you don't want to overstrip it or nothing. You just want it snug and tight and it's just going to stop. And the bottom one, do the same thing to it. And then go ahead and set your angle that you want on your angle finder. And go ahead and adjust the bottom one out to where you get the negative camber alignment that you need. So once you guys get your cam alignment correct, we're going to go ahead and do the toe in, toe out alignment, which you can do with a framer square here. I got a two foot framer square. You're going to push this all the way up against the front part of your template here, and then from the sides, you're going to push it all the way in. Now, by doing that, and you guys probably can't see that, but there's a uh, ruler down here on the bottom that shows me measurements, and I'm at the second mark off the corner in on this side. So then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to put this framer square on the other side and do the same exact thing. Push it all the way up and push it up against there. 
And you guys can't see this, but I am exactly at the same mark, second one out from the end on the other side. So that means that my steering is exactly perfectly centered, correct, and adjusted right. Now, I don't want you to put your batteries back in. Please, please, please don't put your batteries back in and fire this up to get your steering centered back again if it's not right. Like I said, these are quarter inch razor blades, basically. If you happen to hit your throttle on that thing, you're done. It's gonna create all kinds of problems. It's gonna ruin your car. It's probably gonna tear you up. So do not do that. If you happen to think that your steering's off and it's not correct, all you gotta do is take your level and you can put your level up against your two templates and physically push your car that way until the steering is the same. You can do a level on both sides and squeeze it. That way you know it's pretty close to the same. Anyway, once you've done that, now you're going to go ahead, you're going to leave this right where it's at here, nice and tight up against there, and you're going to take your angle finder, and what we're going to do now is we're going to find the angle of our toe in here by putting this up against the framer square and up against our template here is going to tell us what our angle is. There we go. Make sure everything's nice and tight. It won't work or give you a correct accurate measurement if it's not. So we went ahead and did that. What do we got here? We got 91.3. So that tells me that I am towed in here on this corner 1.3 degrees. And it's going to be the same on the other side. So that's what I'm looking for and that makes me happy. Now if your towing is not correct and you need to adjust it, you're going to have to adjust your steering linkage. Right here I've got a 5 millimeter wrench and this right here is where you adjust your linkage at. You can put this right here and you can adjust up or you can adjust down. Now as you adjust up, it's going to take your wheel and it's going to turn it in like this. As you adjust down, it does just the opposite and it goes out. Now that's the same on all four of these corners. That's one thing that's really cool about Traxxas. They made it super friendly for you. So on this side you go up, it's going to turn it in. On the other side you go up, it's going to turn it in. If you go down, it's going to turn it out. So when you go on the opposite side of the car, it's set up exactly the same way. So it makes it really easy to get these adjusted correctly. And that's all there is to it, guys. Okay, well that's it, guys. Once you get your camber alignment done and your tone alignment done, you're guaranteed that your car is going to run straighter. Your drivetrain, your bearings, your tires are going to last longer. It's just a really good thing to do and you should probably do this every couple months or every time you do an adjustment on your car or take the control arms off. That way you know you're still straight. So I hope this helps you guys out and please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Travis with Upgraded RC. Peace out.